Today's modification is the addition of the Vortex mount, GPS mount from High Tide Technologies on my 2016 BMW R1200 RS. Uh, this should be a fairly simple installation and I just wanted to record it on video for those who mightn't have tried it yet. Uh, this is an excellent piece of kit and um, it should relocate the GPS from its normal stock location into a location that is just above the, the uh, instrument cluster on the bike. Makes it more safe to look at your GPS while you're riding down the road. You don't have to look down. You just look straight ahead and just dip your eyes from the, uh, from the road a little and then you, you'll be able to you know, check out all the information on the GPS. So just a quick video to uh, chronicle the installation process. This is the Vortex mount as shipped from uh, High Tide Technologies in Australia. Uh, thanks to Tony on the R1200RS forum. Um, this has been beautifully engineered and manufactured. Uh, looks like a real custom piece. Uh, I opted to get one with the with the V embossed, V for vortex embossed in the uh, in the mount itself, and um, comes with some hardware, uh, some screws and plastic uh, washers. Um, so not a heck of a lot to uh, of parts to put together, and there's some also some bumper uh, bumper uh, pads there. Instead of the stock location, which is right on uh, on the handlebars, it's going to be re relocated to above the instrument cluster as you can see over there. Um, so the first thing we've got to do is probably to remove this ram mount because I can't see how I can get to uh, removing the um, I don't know if you can see it here but removing the the stock uh, the GPS cradle from the stock bracket without removing this mount first. Remove the windscreen I like to take them off uh, two screws at a time, initially diagonally. Uh, the windscreen has some uh, bushings here and sometimes they can fall out. So you want to take these off, uh, bearing in mind that the bushings are loose in there. Next, the uh, vortex mount is going to be installed onto the carrier. So lining up the bottom screws to see where it's going to have to go. Um, I note that uh, bottom screws lined up good, but the top screws are kind of slightly off. And I notice that this tab here is a little bit bent downwards for some reason. It's not at the same angle. I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but it's not the same angle as this. Um, I don't know what happened there. So I'm going to eyeball this and bend it down by hand and, uh, and then try and fit this uh, to the carrier a little bit better. Oops. Cracked. I guess the paint cracked a little bit. So just eyeballing it there, it's got to bend a little bit more. Okay, let's see how it fits now. So that fits perfectly there and that lines up well there. So, I tell you, my, uh, my bending was precision, very precision. Now I've got to go and install the four screws on that. Okay, now we've got the vortex here and we're ready to start installing it on the carrier. Um, as you can see here, I've only got one of the screws and spacers and my Allen key in my hand. And I'm going to install it one at a time simply because I've got to put this spacer underneath the tab and then screw it on to the carrier. Um, this is going to be a little tricky to do so that's why I'm doing it one at a time. So let's start by putting this here just like that. I got my screw, screw caught. So with that there, what I can do is now, I'm not going to tighten this, but I'm just going to keep it like that so it doesn't kind of like, you know, follow over to this side. 
and I'll get the other one to do the diagonal opposite side. So there you go. I'm going to install this on this side here now and put the screw in. Got to be careful not to cross thread this. These are brass uh, threads. And here we go. Drop, drop my first screw. A little tricky here. I've got that one caught. Not cross threaded. Okay, so I'm going to keep that a little bit more slack than that. As a matter of fact, I'm going to back off on this one a little bit because where I've got a diagonal connection now or a diagonal set of pair of screws. I can just put slip slide those washers in underneath or spacers in and just finish up the other. So you can see how that that is uh, lined up there. So let me try and stick that screw in there. I have to move move it over a little bit so that the the mount is actually uh, centered over the the hole. And this one probably going to be the trickiest one to do just make sure that my spacer is centered and I've got it I think let's see yes it's not cross threaded so there we've got we've got all the screws caught so now I'm gonna just diagonally uh, just tighten it slightly down well just until it hits the, the stop I'm not really going to tighten because I've been known to strip threads quite easily so I'm going to just do that and then I'm going to have another quick look at the uh, instructions and return back to the installation good now I've since tightened up these four screws here using my Allen key. Uh, I did use the long arm of the Allen key just to tighten it to finger, finger strength. So there's no torque setting to tighten these screws onto, but you can just feel it. Just using your fingers, your three fingers, just tighten it finger strength. Don't use your arm, just use your fingers. Okay, and that'll give a good tight enough uh, connection. Uh, one thing I wanted to point, point out is where I've mounted the vortex into the lower holes, lower of the two holes, that means my windscreen now has to go into the upper position, the upper holes. For me here, uh, right now it's, what, today is November uh, 12th, I believe. So it's mid-November, we're coming into to, uh, to winter, uh, winter time. So it's going to get a little bit cooler here in Houston. So upper holes for the standard windscreen is fine. I do have a touring windscreen that uh, is longer, uh, it's a taller windscreen and um, if I do find that I'm going to use that instead then I just have to remove the vortex, put the vortex into the upper holes and then put the windscreen into the lower holes. So whatever windscreen, uh, you've got to move your vortex around depending on where you want your windscreen to be mounted. If you want your main screen to be mounted into the upper holes, you've got to be prepared to unscrew the vortex and put it into the lower holes. Now, what I'm going to do is clean off the tops of these screws here with a bit of alcohol, as suggested by the instructions. So I've got a little alcohol here. I'm going to just wipe this just to make sure that, uh, you know, <clears throat> the, the little bumper pads have a good stick-on surface. A surface to stick onto. But what this means also is that if you're going to keep moving your vortex around, that means you've got to keep moving these little bumper. Uh, the, so you've, <laughs> you probably should go to the hardware store and buy a set of these stick-on pads. You probably can get them. It's the same kind of a pad that will, will, will work for you know your, your kitchen cabinets or, or anything like that where you've got the little round bumpers, uh, bumper pads. So you can just put them on there. So that's not a big deal. But just know that to, in order to move this, you'll have to pull those, peel those little bumpers off and then uh, unscrew. So I've uh, actually 
installed the bumper uh, pads, if you were, if you will, uh, on the screws. Uh, you can see that one there. Sorry for the shakes. I'm zoomed in a bit. Um, the instructions suggest that you actually uh, use tweezers to do this. Uh, I don't know about you, but uh, I'm pretty good with my fingers. And the important thing is to not get your fingertips in contact with the sticky side because then you'll transfer the oils onto the, uh, the sticky side. But if you can carefully peel that off with uh, holding the edges of it, and they're, they're kind of like tacky on the outside uh, because that's the nature of silicone. Um, if you can actually uh, manage to pull them off holding on to the back side of these bumpers, uh, you'll be able to better position them over the screws. So that's what I did and um, I've got all four of them in good in good uh, position. They're all in place. So ne next step would be I guess to start relocating the, um, uh, the GPS cradle and uh, continuing with the uh, installation. So I've gotten, I took the, the GPS off uh, just to make it easier. I removed this side screw from, <clears throat> from the cradle and I put it here. Make, you've got to make sure that you don't uh, drop it down in here because I don't need that kind of drama right now. So I'm just taking this off and I think I can probably manage to do that uh, by my fingertips. No, I can't. Uh, because the screw likes to, I, I guess it's binding in the in the threads, so... Oh well. All I can probably do is use this to give me a little bit better purchase. There we go. And the screw is almost out, so... Um, not following the conventional uh, sensible instruction by putting a towel there, because I'm a little bit of a renegade right now, I guess. I'm just going to make sure that my fingers are underneath, and here's the screw. So the screw's there. So here's my, my cable, uh, the cradle. Now, I've got to obviously loosen this. Uh, there is a, um, a zip tie holding this cable onto the other cables there, so I'm going to have to let that go. Okay. Now you're probably wondering, oh, he's got the yellow cloth out. Yes, and that's because uh, to, in order to disconnect the, uh, the cable, you've got to take this piece off. And that piece is connected via two little tiny screws. There's the tiny screws. Can you see it? There's one right here. And <laughs> needless to say, I don't want that dropping on the floor. So I'm going to take it off now and let you know. Um, uh, I'll resume it after I've put the cradle back onto the Vortex. This is the next day of this installation of the Vortex uh, GPS uh, mount. Uh, the reason why it's taking so long is um, when I started to disassemble the, br the cradle for the GPS so that I can pass it between the forks uh, past you know the wire and uh, the GPS between the the forks to get it up uh, in front so that it can go up by the uh, instrument cluster uh, I managed to drop uh, the steel uh, there's a steel uh, barrel with threads on both sides and I'll show you it in a second I managed to drop that in taking the thing apart drop that down into the engine into the top of the engine and it took a long time to get this thing out, out of the, uh, you know, I couldn't get it out actually. I actually gave up. And um, I went to lunch. I said, ah, the hell with it. I went to lunch and um, stopped the installation right then. And then I came back and I didn't feel like working on the bike anymore. So here I am today now on day two. So what I basically had to do was take the whole side, uh, the right side of the, uh, the, the the body cover of the bike off so that it can get access to where this thing fell down. And of course, as soon as I took that off, uh, I could easily get it out. So now I'm going to re, uh, you know, resume the installation of the Vortex mount. 
But all of this is a learning experience and hopefully by taking this video I can, uh, you know, steer some of you in the, in the right direction and uh, you can avoid the pitfalls that I had. But I had an ulterior motive also for taking the, uh, uh, the, the right side body off anyway. When I got it back from Asheville, um, it looked like one of the, the, the uh, there was a gap, you know, in how the, uh, the body fairings, the side fairings were put on. And I, I just wanted to go back in there and make sure everything was tight and there was no screws missing or, or, or the installation was done right. So that's the other reason why I wanted to take that apart. So it's Sunday morning now and I'm doing this right now. So we'll resume the installation of the, of the GPS uh, mount. This is the cradle for the GPS. So I figured I can't get this whole cradle between, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, up underneath between the right side fork and the, 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 the center uh, yoke. I don't know what you call that right now. But anyway, I can't get that up between there. So I figured I have to screw, unscrew these four bolts here, right? these four bolts and take it all apart. So in doing so, I says, hmm, how is this coming apart? And I looked at the back, oh, the nuts are here and the screws are here. So I says, okay, good, take it all apart. So I took this all apart and then unknown to me, when you look at the back, this thing is there. That fell down in here <laughs> and landed up somewhere on top of the, uh, by the, uh, just uh, inboard of the coolant filler neck and on a little platform in there and there was all kinds of wires there that that, uh, that stopped me from reaching down from here with, a, with some kind of a, a tool to, to pull it up and of course I don't know what metal this is made of but it's not very magnetic so I couldn't reach in there grab it with my good strong magnet and pull it up no it wouldn't come up so after about 25 minutes of trying or it seemed like 25 minutes I just gave up so anyway I managed to get it off this morning so here it is so tip when you're taking this thing apart be aware that this fits in here and it goes behind here and that can follow in there and make this whole installation a pain in the butt okay the installation in itself is fine it's easy but if you lose this then as so many things go with modifications on, on anything you know it's always something else that happens to throw things off the rails just a tip so now with the cradle taken apart and this thing here now rerouted between this is where you got to push it through so I pushed it through here the, cr the whole cradle couldn't fit that's why I had to take it apart so I put disassemble it and then I push this part here through that gap there okay now that I've got it up here so I'm just looking at this and saying hmm this is not long enough this is a full extension of this wire so as you can see it's not gonna, there's no way that the cradle once attached to this thing here will be able to fit onto the this part of the bracket okay so it means that we've got to extend the wire now I've got no bar risers on this bike uh, as you can see this is a standard uh, it's standard uh, installation there's no bar risers here so uh, <laughs> out of the box with the vortex in the lowermost position here as you can see in the lowermost position so in other words this part here of the bracket is in the lowermost position you don't have at least on my bike I don't know uh, different bikes you know different uh, manufacture dates or whatever might have more wiring but my bike does not have enough uh, extension to enable this thing to go up there without any further uh, lengthening of the wire so now the question is where do you lengthen the wire so if you look down here you probably can see that there are some zip ties uh, let me see if I can focus a little bit better this is a camcorder I'm using uh, there's a zip tie right there I can loosen that but just by eyeballing it it's not going to show me it's not going to give me that much extra wire I don't think so now to trace that wire 
And there's my bike with the side removed. Okay. <laughs> so, <clears throat> it turns out that it's a good thing that the side was removed because I suspect that when you release those zip ties that I showed you before, this is what, you know, this wire here, I believe, is the wire for the GPS. And as you can see, there's a fair bit of extra. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo those zip ties and pull it through and see how it works. Okay, zip ties are removed and I'm jiggling this part so you can see it's clearly that. So all I need to do is feed that up uh, underneath uh, and I should get some more wiring so that this will actually look. Just by doing that alone, I've got it fairly close. So it's just a matter of doing that, extending that wiring. Sorry, I probably wasn't shooting the right place. So all I've got to do is extend the wiring and uh, from here, from right there, and then zip tie it back neatly and I'll have the extension that I need. Well, here we are. So with the wire extended, uh, I have more than enough wire, as you can see there, uh, more than enough wire to route it behind the instrument cluster. But I'll just put it up there just for now, uh, just to see how it's going to, you know, uh, align with respect to the windshield, which I'm going to put on now. Um, and then I'll worry about taking up the extra slack in that wire and rerouting that wire properly when I'm done. So, installation is almost complete. So when I put the windshield on in front, it was hitting the top of this. Which means that this arm here had to be adjusted downwards. And that's all well and good because uh, you just have to unloosen that there uh, Allen screw or hex head screw I should say uh, on both sides. Only thing is that ferrule rod sometimes wants to spin depending on how tightly uh, old Tony from High Tide uh, tightened that, uh, that hex screw. It so happened that the one on this side here was slackish and the one on the other side was tight so that when I tried to slacken that off it, it kind of like uh, you know uh, spun the whole ferrule rod so it's just a matter of clamping on to that with a pair of vice grips but you don't want to damage the beautifully uh, machined ferrule uh, rod I call it a ferrule rod uh, tapped ferrule rod I suppose uh, you don't want to damage that so I, I have to go and find a piece of rubber so I've got a piece of rubber underneath the jaws of that, as you can see there, underneath the jaws of my vice grips, uh, clamping down on that so that I can go and slacken off the other side, uh, that uh, hex screw. I suppose I could have used a little bit of force and pushed that, the whole uh, thing down, but I don't want to do that. Okay, so this is a, another option. You got to clamp onto that with something and you don't want to damage it, so you've got to uh, you've got to protect it with some rubber or some some kind of thing between the jaws of the vice grips Okay This is what I mean by installation is not always straightforward. But there is always something There's a famous saying. There's always something that crops up So at this point you put the windscreen on uh, With just two screws. So I've got this screw here and that screw there. They're both snugged down so right away um, I can go and get the proper adjustment of my bracket, my articulated uh, vortex bracket, uh, and I can make my final adjustments. Uh, it's in the lowermost position, and I can just raise it up in the uppermost position, and you can see that the, the bracket as designed travels with the windshield because it's attached to the carrier, of course. So bring it back down. There we go. So you can see now how the clearance uh, is achieved. So now I can just tip this back uh, to suit the angle that I want. But I've got to make sure that the arc formed by the top of this, going this way, clears the windshield. Okay, so that's where the adjustment of that screw comes in. 
so with that screw adjustment I can change the, the angle of that bracket and then with that screw adjustment I can change the angle of the of the GPS I've put my GPS screen in there just so that I can uh, get a better idea of how it sits and how the adjustment will have to be made here's a tip remember I talked about the arc at the top there uh, being <coughs> such that it must travel along that line when you go riding this bike you might find that oh there's some glare so I might want to change the angle of this the GPS so what I've just done is made that angle the worst possible angle it could be uh, so it's basically at 90 degrees to the arm the arm 90 degrees I made that 90 degrees and then adjusted this arm now I'm going to adjust this arm to suit so wherever that's uh, going to land after making sure that it's not touching there I'll just leave a couple of millimeters then I'm going to go tighten that screw on both sides and then I can draw or remove my uh, <coughs> windscreen and do the final tightening up so the installation of the Vortex GPS mount is complete as far as I'm concerned um, as you can see I've mounted I've choose, chosen to mount my wire behind the instrument cluster here and left a, a good bit of slack here uh, the windshield is in the lower position right now so what you need to do is extend it to the uppermost position to make sure to, to uh, decide on how much slack you need so that is there in the lower position the slack is taken up right there kind of out of the way almost from the rider this is the viewpoint of the rider you hardly see the wire the wire is going be behind I opted not to zip tie uh, the wire onto the the bracket there because there's no real need instead what I did was I zip tied the wire and you probably won't be able to see this but let me give it a shot I zip tied the wire in there so that's the first point of fixity for the wire so the wire is fixed there and you need to rotate the handlebar from side to side to make sure that there's enough slack in the wire so that's the first first zip tie here and there's another zip tie underneath there you zip tie it to your heart's content however you want to zip tie it and uh, everything is good and there's still a lot there's still a little bit of slack there that's the wire that is attached to so there's good access. As a matter of fact, I think I like the position of those connectors a little bit better where it is. Um, so that's the installation done. Essentially what I can tell you is, you're most likely going to have to take the side panels off. I don't care which bike you've got, what, what uh, data manufacturer, you're probably going to have to take the side panels off just to get that little bit of extra wire. Just to, you know, make sure you get a good installation. And despite what I said at the start of the installation it's a good idea to have a cloth because uh, you want to make sure that you protect all your finishes and all that plus I kind of use this area right here you see I've got my uh, tank bag ring there it's a nice ring to hold screws and little small allen keys and all of that I kind of have that there as a little cup to put all my bits so I can do that without fear of scratching the tank when I put my screws, my allen keys and all of that there. So now the whole idea is, this is all done, okay? And what do I do now with these? Uh, I'll have a think about that, but that's not part of the installation of the Vortex. So I'm gonna quit for now. As you can see, I've got this ugly uh, 12 volt connector. That's something else that's gonna have to be rethought. And of course, if you remember the start of the video, I've got my RAM mount here for my phone. Maybe I can change the mount and use something of over here. Who knows? But my new goal is to make sure whatever I do, that this is visible. Because I wanna see this when I'm riding. Well, not look at it, but it should be there. It's a Beamer. That's all for me and I think I'm going to wrap this up now. Uh, the installation of the Vortex GPS mount from High Tide Technologies. Thanks again to Tony. Very good piece of kit. Uh, my installation took a little bit longer than I thought uh, because I dropped that bit down in the, in the bowels of the engine. Pain in the butt, but oh well. I didn't drop any screws down there. 
but I dropped a big old ferrule rod. Go figure. That's all, folks.